Hey everybody, welcome to my other movies this week. I'm talking powerfully but softly because I'm in the library. <laughs> this week we touch on a precocious kid movie from what was Fox is now Disney called King and King Arthur's Court. Now, King and King Arthur's Court, if you've not seen it, it's weird because it's filled with a lot of people that don't matter to the plot, uh, like Kate Winslet is in it, Daniel Craig is in it. Uh, Joss Ackland is in it, and Art Malik are in it. And the star is Tom and Ian's, Thomas Ian Nicholas, who does not matter now, playing against, you know, a future Bond, a future Kate Winslet. Um, anyway, so watch this very unbalanced movie as a precocious kid goes back in time and teaches people how to roller skate. Thanks, guys. Welcome to Myopia Movies this week. Well, actually, we can do this as a mission briefing. Welcome to Mission Briefing. This week, we watch Disney do Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. I'm Nick Hoffman, host of Myopia Movies and Riffron Center Provenal Panel. We have... I'm Kelly, back again. And I'm Charlie Ruse. So, we have decided to dust off this movie that apparently both Kelly and I tortured our parents with when we were kids. So much. I'm surprised they didn't... Well, it wasn't, it wasn't just me. It was me and my brother. We both loved it, and I think that's the only reason they gave in. And I think if I asked my brother to watch this again, he would get 10 minutes in and go, absolutely not. Yeah, see, this is, so, very early on, this is episode 320 or something like that. Episode 6, we did a Goofy movie with me and my brothers, and it was like the first time we'd seen it in 20 years, and luckily that one kind of holds up. This is one I imagine if we sat down, it'd be like, oh, this just ruined Thanksgiving. Like, <laughs> it's just one. Can we watch anything else? I'm sure this is the first time you've seen this one, Charlie. Uh, yes, it oh. has been. It, it, yes. I did not see this when it came out. No kidding. Um, I but don't think a- Jonathan hasn't seen it either. And I think he really wanted to watch it with me. And I was like, I put it on during my lunch break and just kind of, you know, went back to work early because, no, <laughs> it was so bad i had been putting stuff off all week and i was like this is the time to do the things i don't want to do yeah i mean like this is totally like we got to take out it's a kid's movie so sometimes my daughter watches these like the kid movie with us and just see if she's interested and about 10 minutes in i was just like oh i've made a horrible mistake like i i i also don't know what maybe it was his agent who was just like we just need to see uh thomas e nicholas the guy who's uh he's one of the friends in uh, american pie like He's been in things, but like we just wanted to see him be terrible at baseball because he's also in Rookie of the Year and he's terrible in baseball. Like this kid just, he was always the loser. He played a loser for 20 movies and now is an adult and I'm sure he's a well-rounded person. Um, he's maybe. a terrible actor. Not great, no. And it's also funny because he's around people who can actually act. K- Kate Winslet can uh, act. Yeah, Kate Winslet. But he brings them all down yeah. when he's in the scenes with them. It's like they have nothing to go on and somehow this is the main kid. Like, I, you can kind of see it, you know, because Kate Winslet doesn't really hide her feelings ever. So she's in <laughs> she's, this scene acting with this kid, and she's like, we need to save my sister. Please, attention. for the love of God, give me something. Her eyes get bigger, and you're like... <laughs> well, it's also like we've done this ten times. If you flub this line again, kid, I will murder you. <laughs> I mean, but he's also acting against a young Daniel Craig, who's playing Kane. Yeah. He's, he's acting against Josh Auckland, who, if you know Disney, he's always... He's Hans, the guy who sharpens the blades and see. Um, in the Mighty Ducks movies and owns the skate shop, but he's also someone who's acted for 50 years until he died a few years ago. But, like, he's fine. He's Art Malik plays Lord Velasco, and he is eating all the scenery in this. Um, but Thomas Ian Nicholas, who apparently recently has made a career of being directors, so he's been Martin Scorsese in a movie and Walt Disney in a movie? God help us all. What? All righty. Yeah, Wait, what movie was he Walt Disney in? A movie called... Uh, uh, Walt before Mickey, he played Walt Disney in. Oh, I didn't watch that. And then in Zeroville, he plays Martin Scorsese for some reason. Um, he's no longer Thomas Ian Nicholas anymore. He's Thomas Nicholas because he's rebranding that nonsense. Uh, they should all rebrand that nonsense. A hundred percent. So, uh, Kelly, since you and I watched this the most, do you want to give us a plot synopsis? Yeah. So, um, you know, we start out with this kid whose name i have reblocked out of my brain calvin, calvin fuller, fuller. <laughs> and uh, because someone saw back to the future so the kid who travels through <laughs> to the past has to be called calvin clearly 
Uh, so we start out at a at a baseball game um, where he's terrible, and there's an earthquake, and he ends up back in Camelot as the quote unquote knight, which is his baseball team, quote unquote knight that Merlin calls back to save them. Um, <laughs> terrible acting, hilarity ensues. He makes a Big Mac hamburger out of who Wrong. knows what. Wrong. And and they had. Moments before, I thought that the tomato was poison, and it obviously was not. So uh, he ends up saving the day in hilarious ways through a joust that no 13-year-old should ever be in, and love wins the day, kind basically. Of. So, I mean, that's that's a good stuff. Yeah, you did a good job. Yeah, it's... I mean, I missed a lot of stuff, but I figured we would talk about that. Yeah, I mean, but did you? <laughs> Am I right? I, I mean, mean I don't know. It's a Mark Twain story without the magic, right? Like, yeah. although he has magic in the form of a Walkman <laughs> and a Discman, oh, yes. which shoots a laser beam and kills a man. And <laughs> can we? The volume being that loud? Did 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 I never experience that with my Walkman or portable well, CD he players? Well, it so. up to horns yeah, to the, use them as external speakers. Right. Okay. The earbuds into the horn. Because so I had already started going back to work at this point. In the so, so he saw the Flintstones once. And <laughs> so I only spent two, 10 minutes at lunch then because uh, I think I gave up pretty early on when his sister was like, um, when you die, I'm going to take all your shit, essentially. And he said something and was it came out as, you know, this monotone thing. And I was just like. He just whines at the screen. Yeah. And he does all this valley nonsense, and they have to explain that bad means good. Oh my god! Yeah, this goes the on vernacular for so was, long. It just felt like this '90s way of saying these are the hip words. Mm-hmm. Learn them. Well, and it, it's 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 your typical like you know adult writing children. This is what <laughs> this is what the cool kids do. But this is also what it means. Yes. Well, but the other side of it is when Bill and Ted did it only three years before this came out, they didn't explain anything. They just let them be kids and figure it out. You shouldn't have to explain it. It's like, you know, it's like my husband tells me, if if I have to explain my joke, it's not funny. It's very much a, hey, you've read our reviews. Hey, look, also, Jonathan tells me I'm not funny all the time, and he's a fucking liar. (laughs) So... (laughs) Exactly. Point made. Um, I will also say, to your point earlier... Uh, Merlin is the one who casts the spell. We have this floating head voiceover like it's fucking Red Dwarf or something. And then he goes, I'm casting a spell to bring back a knight that will bring order to the realm or whatever. Because at this point, yeah. uh, King Arthur has gotten lazy and he's let people walk all over the land. And then later he meets Merlin again. And Merlin, like the casting director, says, oh, I've made a terrible mistake. <laughs> and, and that, but right, like he goes... Who are you? What's happening? I thought you were good in this. And it's it's just, it's choice. <laughs> so after the kid watches three pitches go by, he doesn't swing at all, which again is used exactly in Rookie of the Year two years later. Um, he l- falls out of the sky and lands on the Black Knight, who is in possession of this chest. We don't know what's really in it. You know, it's, I guess, gold or something. We don't yeah, know. It's, it's, it's assumed to be money because of the plot line that, the Black Knight's supposed to be defending the kingdom from the crooked tax collectors. And we eventually see that he, uh, the Black Knight, spoiler, she is uh, buying food to give to the starving masses in Camelot, and they only bothered to buy 15 or 20 extras. So it's just the same 15 people going, grabbing bread, coming around, and wearing a jaunty mustache, and then grabbing more bread. <laughs> um, yeah, the boobs with the mustache really threw me off that one time. I don't know. <laughs> What was happening in that scene, but... Um, but yeah, so he falls out of the sky, knocks the Black Knight off the horse, and then essentially gets celebrated, and they want to find this kid who saved the realm by kidnapping and stealing from everyone in town, which is something. I also will say, you, your plot is apt, because it's based on a Twain book, the Twain book is moves, this movie takes 45 minutes to even get going. This yeah. kid yeah. is just incompetent and elbowy and gets threatened by everyone, embarrasses himself in front of all the babes, because again, we're getting babes from a medieval castle like it's Bill and Ted. But he wasn't even embarrassed. Like, and first of all, and here's, I, it doesn't matter what era you're in, not 
before you walk in a room. You don't open some teenage boy's room and then <laughs> act Dude. Nervous about the fact that he's in his underwear and then dancing he's, around the room. Yeah, he's well, no, he's doing karate. Karate. Yes. Uh-huh. And he's totally talking to her like nothing's wrong. And then when he when she's embarrassed, he's like, Oh, sorry, let me hide behind the door and put my shoes on too. Like your shoes. Well, and she she wakes him up at one point and he's like I, I'm gu- I'm guessing he's completely naked. Uh but she's like, well, oh, she, my. she turns around and he's like, oh, yeah, okay. Like he d- didn't even care anymore. And I'm like, why did, but, did, but you didn't care to begin with either. So why are we even, why are we making a point about this? I also, who gives a kid a guest room with a secret passageway to Merlin's lab and now her father's, quote, private sanctuary? This thought process, I, I don't understand it. Plot. Did it Plot. used to be? Plot. It's not. Uh, so uh two things uh first of all that scene you're describing is what got him american pie 100 percent. like him doing fake karate <laughs> half naked that's american i pie. believe that yeah, yeah 100%. Uh, and second i was wrong this came out the year after rookie of the year so they saw rookie of the year and said we need to make this kid terrible at baseball because the whole framing device is rookie of the year Wait, can i ask a serious question though because sure. i haven't seen it was his acting better in that well, they just don't More expect. The same. Well, but they don't expect much of him because he's the straight man, and then Daniel Stern, the the tall guy with the afro from Home Alone, is the pitching coach. So he gets to be crazy, and then the kid just has to look surprised mm-hmm. that an adult is acting this way. Yeah, so that works. The comedy was around him. Ha. Huh. This he's just he's supposed to be the comedy. He's supposed to be the anchor that moves the story along. That is the comedy. That is the comic relief, and it's not working. He Did someone tell him that? I'm sure. And, and like the other thing, too, is there's supposed to be physical comedy in this. If you need physical comedy, you get Daniel Stern. Yeah. You, you, don't, you don't get, and again, I love Daniel Craig, but he is a, carved out of stone in this, and the idea of him laughing at, at a physical joke is not going to happen. No. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. I mean, the closest thing to that would probably be King Arthur, because, you know... Oh, uh, Josh Ackland is great. Oh, no, he is great. I mean, and he's very expressive. Yeah, I had fun with him. His face would tell a story. Yes. But his acting was all in the face. off of that? Well, well there's two mistakes they make right off the bat, yeah. which is that Kane is never in this movie. Well, like, somehow Daniel Craig is in this for half an hour total. He needs to be around this kid all the time, because yeah. then the movie can happen. Yeah. And also, you only get Merlin by staring into a well. Merlin also should be a character because then the kid has something to act against. Well, that could have been the comic relief. That could have been that comedy that he bounces off of. And again, not to reference the 80s, but like if you had Chris Lloyd as this Merlin and he's just and walking around all disheveled and like he's dropping scrolls, then Thomas E. Nicholas doesn't have to do anything. He can just be an awkward kid trying to get laid in you know 14th century england which he he's trying so hard to get this wet oh my goodness jesus <laughs> i mean he's thirsty oh um God, I'm sorry. but like there's just no other movement to this because remember this movie is movement the, the problem we also have with first kid is there's not really a ticking clock here so in order to replace that someone watched aladdin and jafar's trying to have sex with princess jasmine again. yes yes and because of that like, that's technically the movement. And then there's this whole will they, won't they, where Kate Winslet, as the princess, has to decide whether or not she's going to marry Iago or whatever, or Jafar, or if she's going to w- marry whoever wins this tournament, which he's also a part of. Originally, he wasn't <laughs> supposed to be, though. Well, and the other thing is, too, like, you know, she talks about that she, she can't marry for love and this and that, and she's in love and all that. We don't find out until the last 25 minutes who it even fucking is. Yeah, she, she, and then it's Daniel Craig, and you're like, this is the most awkward setup ever. Like, I mean, well, also, you know. yeah, I mean, you sort of figure it out because yeah. they're buddy buddy, and she I, wants, she's got this mournful, wistful air about her. I don't yeah, sure. But I watched this at 12 oh, yeah. the first time, right? And That's like, true. that was, it was a surprise for me that those people that maybe had emotions in their face that one time yeah. loved each other. <laughs> Well, okay. I mean, and we still show us to get no, to this, but you bring up a very good point. Here's okay. the here's my problem. Okay. Do it, do it, do it. Two things that just really piss me off about this movie. That's it. Well, really. Okay, got it. Uh, the number one thing is that I found out 
I, I, I looked it up, and it was a theatrical release. And Disney, shame on you. Have self-respect because the graphics, the special effects, that's like direct to Disney Channel type of quality. Okay. It's it's what like when That's I said there's like twenty extras. There's yeah. there's no budget here. Yeah, yeah. no, it, it was unacceptable. I, if you're gonna do a massive release, you know, no, uh, you've got to put more money into it. Apparently, the budget was fifteen million. I think it's pocket change. Yeah, exactly. It costs more to make a season of Ducktales. Yeah, right. Exactly. Um, the other thing that really the other thing that through. really pissed me off is that there are elements in the movie that make me think that they were trying to be clever. And they could have been clever, and they could have told a satirical movie, yep. but they didn't. Yep. And th- that one shining moment where I'm like going, oh, they're leaning into Connecticut Yankee, was when he first got there and he's talking about the uh, round table. And he right. says to King Arthur, round table where you can look everyone in the eye because you're all equal. And the king and King Arthur looks at him and says, all equal? What a crazy idea. That's right. <laughs> and I was like... And well, so I thought that that was what was going to be is that, you know, maybe that that whole satire of yeah. of, of medieval society. Well, and like also you're, you're right. They should have had more fun. Like and also we're talking about people he could have been with. It would have been great because everyone knows a little bit about King Arthur. And he goes, whatever happened to Lancelot? And there's just this old guy at the end of the table. And he's like, I'm Lancelot. Or he's dead. Like you could have a joke where there's this old guy who's trying to teach him how to fight, but he's so old he can't fight himself anymore. Yeah. Give them, like, and again, Thomas E. Nicholas, not very good in this, but they also don't give him an opportunity to be good. Yeah. Other than that snappy snap 90s dialogue about him teaching her what slang is and getting a Big Mac wrong, which bothered the hell out of me. Okay, I'm genuinely, how do you get a Big Mac wrong? It's just a hamburger, It's the commercial everyone knows. To all beef patties, special Special. sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions, and a sesame seed bun. He gives her a whole wheat bun with tomatoes on it. And I'm just like, there's no tomatoes. No tomatoes on a Big Mac. They just wanted the one thing where she thought it was poison. Even though, why would you grow something that's poison? Because he clearly just takes it off the table and they just have tomatoes. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, the the funny parts of this did not. I don't need a McDonald's. I don't know what went into a Big Mac. Well, well, I mean, as, as a child who, in the 80s and as a child that in the song 70s, is the song embedded they played in your all head. the time. Um, I'm sorry, I'm so much younger than you guys. Oh, it's okay. Oh, my God. Everybody's you know, right? getting higher and higher. Um, but, I mean, speaking of, though. <laughs> my, kid, my kid did that yesterday. She was, she, I told her that she's the best snuggler and she couldn't tell her daddy. And Jonathan was like, what are you talking about? She goes, nothing. <laughs> and he was like, are you sure? And she goes, nothing. <laughs> just like kept getting higher. Kept making it, ratcheting it higher, yeah. I think she did it on purpose, but I don't actually know. And so that just made me think, sorry. That's cute. No, you're fine. <laughs> uh, we should get rid of all the 90s shit uh, at once because it's terrible. But it, all it does is slow down this movie, and I just can't be bothered. At one point, um, he, so in, this kid falls into a crevice. Calvin falls into a crevice because he goes back for his backpack. His backpack. So we should get what's in his backpack. Um Rollerblades. Rollerblades. Yeah. Apparently, seven copies of the exact same uniform because it never gets dirty, and they're not washing anything. Snacks. Uh, a, a Snickers bar, I think. Something. Yeah. Um, which he gives to Sir Kane, who even as an Englishman is like, "Thanks, kid." <laughs> this this is gr- I mean, like it could have only been more '90s if it was a Butterfinger, uh, and he went full Bart Simpson for about four seconds, um, but. We then get all of this nonsense where he makes the blacksmith make rollerblades uh, for the other princess. Yeah. Oh, and then a bicycle. And a bicycle eventually. A wooden bicycle. Um, by the way, this woman is called Paloma Biza. Uh, she is the exact same age as Kate Winslet. Fine. They don't look anything alike. Brother and sister. Or sister oh, and sister, Katie. whatever. Yeah. Katie, Princess but, Katie. I don't know. I mean, I, 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 looked at, I looked at what she's known for and Man, she hasn't been in She's not in anything. Like, no. And Next personally, she was years. the best part of that. She was fine. She was totally like, fine. No she, complaints. She was fun. She was like peppy. I don't know. My my favorite part was uh, when she <laughs> basically told Kane to screw him over. And it was like, don't you contradict me. And I was like, this is a real princess. I love that. <laughs> oh, no, and she's good. I mean, yeah. and she has good chemistry with, I mean, with a plank of wood like Thomas E. Nicholas. Um, I will also say uh, Daniel Craig is eight years older than Kate Winslet. 
Um, so that's a little bit awkward. But when this came out, she was 19 at least, so it's not too bad. And he's a good-looking dude, other than that penis isn't haircut. One of, isn't he one of her? Yeah. Mm. It was probably an actual really, really bad wig. Was well, th- was this one of her first? Kate Winslet's one of her first movies? I mean, I imagine she worked as a child, but no, I mean, was you're probably right. I mean, she, pre-Sense and Sensibility? This had to have been. Post? No, it was the same year as Sense and Sensibility. Really? Yeah. So she... <laughs> And, I wonder um, which one recorded first, because like if you go from filming with Alan Rickman to fucking this, like she, she how, was in the same. You... They were they were filming in the same English field, just another. Oh side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just changed my dress. <laughs> That's right. Um, and this might only be Charlie or maybe just me, but she was also in Heavenly Creatures the year before this. I was gonna say I'm I'm trying to understand how Heavenly Creatures, Sensib- Sensibility, Kid and King Arthur's Court. And, that, that, and, I, and I will say, uh, I don't like a lot of what Kenneth Branagh does, but his uh, Hamlet was the year after, in 96, and she was Ophelia in an incredible version of Hamlet, uh, and then Titanic is the year after that. And it's just like, <laughs> like the one of these things is not close. like the other. Like, yeah, like, <laughs> right? Well, I mean, right? I will say that's something very English about her, even and Craig, which is that it's a job, I'll bring everything. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... Oh, a job is a job is a job, and you can do Shakespeare with Brunow. You can do Jim Jim Cameron, Peter Jackson. Yes. Well, <laughs> and and you, you know, can tell that it's very outside of Daniel Craig's realm. Like it's not. You can kind of tell it's not what sure. he saw for himself. But like Kate Winslet throws herself into it. But yeah, like throws herself into it, and she's phenomenal. I, I think maybe there were. Well, she's amazing. I know, and she. This isn't her real accent either. The only movie in her career that she's ever used her natural voice for was Avatar. the no. <laughs> it was the movie that she was in with Jack Black. It's like they they switch houses. Uh, oh, I know what called? you're talking about. Um, yeah, they 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 swap houses and what was it was it a called? love story. Yeah. Sort of. Yeah, well, you. it was it was for you. it was for Cameron Diaz, but for her, she just got to be best friends with Jack Black. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Old she, lady. Yeah, but it was like a meet cute, a heart. Um, um, what was it called? Oh, I can't remember the name of it. But it wasn't the cabin, was it? The vacation, the something. I don't know. Wait, that. she was in that movie where you see uh, Jeffrey Rush's penis. Uh, Quills. She was in Quills too, right? That movie where you see Jeffrey Rush's. <laughs> penis. <laughs> Sorry. She's right, and he's writing, he's writing his like on the wall with his shit. Quills is a strong movie. He plays the Marquis de Sade. Sure, I've not seen this movie. With Sounds Michael like Kine. I need to see this movie. Well, if you I want to see not. his penis, you can. Uh, I love penises. He's Joaquin... super <laughs> Swear to God, if, you guys, if y'all find me and send me dick pics, I will report you. Do not <laughs> fucking give me unsolicited dick pics. <laughs> so, well, the new get... name of this podcast is Unsolicited. <laughs> 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 Not on your life. Um, okay, so enough about Kate Winslet and Dick Pence. Yeah, um, I mean, we were talking about the unnecessary '90s stuff. And, like, there's a lot of his. A lot of his dialogue is being like, it, 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 it's tragically also Brendan Fraser's career, where he's yeah. just like, "What's a TV? Oh my goodness!" Like, you know, Encino Man and Blast from the Past and all that stuff. So he's just spending a lot of time. You're just losing about all them penis things. Um, he is like trying to make trying to teach her what burgers are and what rollerblades are, and he's essentially trying to be a knight because some reason I guess they've established he's the greatest knight in all the land. <sighs> he's going to save Camelot. Camelot. It's what Merlin called for. Um, he has to live up to that. Well, apparently that's how he gets home. Yeah, he, he has can't to go home until he saves Camelot. Until he knocks up the princess. Or Pretty sure he just went home because they were like, what do you want? And he's like, I'm going to fucking go home. He went back in time and he has to make sure that his I mom know. and dad shows up. And if his mom and dad don't get together, he just won't exist. No, that's a different movie. I, I don't know. It sounds pretty much how Daniel Craig has to hook up with Kate Winslet by the end of this. See, I was wondering that. Is he supposed to be their descendant? Like, is there some deeper meaning here or... No, he has to learn how to hit a fastball, it turns out. That's the only thing that this movie's building Which is to. so relevant to everything he did, by the way. It means nothing. 
The only thing we discovered his confidence. The only thing. Yeah, my confidence makes me hit a home run after never doing it before too. The only thing we get is about uh, the cold open is the three steps to hit a home run, and it's actually four four steps. And then Kane does the same thing. The three things to do when you're you're jousting is actually four things. That's it. That's the whole joke. And then at the end, he hits a home run. And so, hooray! Although I will say it's well, a nice button on your un- movie. He also unseats Jafar. What was, the, what was his name in this movie? Lord Belasco. Lord Belasco. Oh, yes. I, I mean, Malik. you knew when that name came across, oh, he's the bad guy. For well, sure. and they also make him the only person with a slight tan in this. Well, also... <laughs> he also and, scowls and the whole time. Uh, and more importantly, mind you, I'm saying this as a follically challenged man, the whole... Bald on top, ponytail in the back. Man, he came across as skeezy from day one. I was like, <laughs> oh, he's evil. Because no one with that haircut is good. Dude, he has like... Well, a, to be fair, knife. they all had to have long hair back then whether you're balding or not. So well, you, right, you but just get to look awkward. But he has like a 1980s wrestler like ponytail. A ponytail. <laughs> That's fair. All That's right. the problem. All right. It's a just... I mean, I could... I could deal with I could deal with a you know riffraff skullet you know I could live Part, with that. party in the back man bun was not yeah, yeah, but, but <laughs> not your thing. Well, he has like Would a Jesse Ventura a rat tail too. <laughs> it was more like a rat tail. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> and also you can't tell me the actor who played Merlin had a full head of hair. Like they gave him a wiggy. Yeah, wig, they, wig, they, wig, they did they something with him. They gave Daniel Craig a wig. There's no way Daniel Craig went. Yeah, I'll style my hair that way. Oh no, absolutely not. And again. Daniel Craig still has hair. Like, that's not a wig in the Bond movies. They just made him look like a jackass. <laughs> they did. <laughs> I will say, so as someone that has gotten into cosplay and wigs and extensions and all this stuff over the last 10 years, like, I didn't realize how widely used extensions were even, like, in the 80s and 90s. Sure. I am very upset that it took me so long to realize that this was a thing <laughs> because my mom kept my hair kind of like at my shoulders. So I did it for most of my life, kept my hair until I was 19 and now it's longer. But even still, it's like, I mean, Kate Winslet's hair was a French braided. So it was half the length that it was supposed to be mm-hmm. and C still down to her waist. And you can, you know, they tied it up higher. You can see where they put the extensions in if you really look, which I do, but I just didn't realize that this was a thing, and it made me so happy. <laughs> well, also, well, at least you found some gems in this turd of a movie. It matched her hair so well, except whoever did her highlights that year gave her this one like white spot right on her right temple. They just it was a little over concentrated, right? Well, I mean, I guess. Come on, she was the best part of this movie. I gotta find something. Oh no, I was I, what I was gonna reference though. <laughs> I mean, pointing out corns in the turd of this movie. Um. This movie, you know, you always make that reference, like a movie that we watch that should be on VHS. Clearly, was not designed yeah. for 4K. I'm, I bet you, if I lower this to 480p, you would still see some of the nonsense. Like when he's, uh, fe- like jousting, it's a stunt double from the beginning, and the dude's a foot taller, yeah, easily. <laughs> like, and again, you can see the line of the highlights, and you can see the line of the extensions. But I bet you could have seen it on a VHS copy. Like, they didn't bother to hide anything. Well, they hid her extensions really well. There okay. there was this, like, stray piece. She, I guess, like... You mean side piece that was too fast? Side piece, yeah. yeah. There's that, too. But no, there was just, like... I mean, like, if your this side piece was Daniel Craig, you'd be fine. I, I would... I would. You'd be totally fine. Yeah, I would be. I would be okay with that. Even very young, skinny, but yet with a 40-year-old face, Daniel Craig. He, I He's mean, not on my list. He has, so he, he has, would have to take me to dinner first. He, he like, has good shoulders, though. Like he, he, he does. Seems like he'd be a good hugger. Yeah, yeah. Warm. Arms are a thing. Women mm. are attracted to good shoulders and good arms. That is a, that is that is actually a thing. Well, I mean, considering that you they dress, would not know that that is my was my thing before I met my husband, but it, it is. I was, will say, but was. before, other than the fact that Thomas E. Nicholas is dressed like a you know Sandlot baseball player the whole time, mm-hmm. they just throw everyone in a pile of laundry. Like these are the baggiest, and somehow he still has shape to him because he must have still been spelt yeah thirty five years ago or twenty seven years ago. Um, oh my god. 1994, right? So 27 years ago. Um, Kelly needs to sit down. <laughs> she needs to I know I saw it after that, but like... Oh, like, I saw it in theaters. Did I? I, I, I didn't see it in theaters. I watched it at home from Blockbuster. I owned the VHS tape in a clamshell because it was Disney, so it had a clamshell. But it wasn't one of the big you know, Disney classic. They knew better. 
<laughs> Michael Eisner said, no, no, this is not a Disney classic. Uh, I actually didn't even know this was Disney until I looked up where to stream it. <laughs> like, it, it, I, yep. didn't ha- I didn't have Disney Channel, so it didn't, like, replay or, or do any of that stuff. And I think my parents hid a lot of movies from me that I liked growing up and in my brain really thought that they were fake. I remembered the title of this one, so I knew it was real. <laughs> but like, well, I mean, it just, it stinks of Disney wanted to pump something out because it was popular. Because it just, it feels like Bill and Ted without anything. Yeah. Like, like even the beats hit the same. It just, if you told me that uh, Josh, Josh Ackland was like their original choice for Socrates, I'd believe you. Because it just seems like they just got all the thi- all the notes out of the garbage. We can do this. Um they just stick to one location. By the way, just looking at the IMDb, a kid in a, a kid in Aladdin's palace, a made-for-TV movie in 1997. I, I have to see this now. This is a total stay tuned. If you Google a kid in King Arthur's court to see like where it's streaming, that's the next movie that came after it. I'm sure and I was it like, is. I kind of want to click on this and like see. No, no, okay. that's how they get you. That is. Well, I was gonna read the Wikipedia. I wasn't gonna like watch it. Mm. right away but somehow part of me thinks it's not as bad am i wrong oh no i you might be i have never oh, seen okay. it i don't I've know never i've never it seen it i just know that it's like terrible I, i'm just it's, no <laughs> i was looking at it and uh you're like essentially it's the same plot so this well let's be clear since they did aladdin before this and it's disney all of this is disney scraps of aladdin like the guy who plays the genie is Polly shore's buddy in biodome <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> Taylor Negron. That's like, less fun. Um, I wonder how many live action movies was Disney doing theatrically when this came out? Oh, like this is a defunct land kind of question, but well, it's, there was like three a year for a while. So this was in the era where, like, okay. Did no one tell me Disney did live action? Like, was it only animated okay, so in my universe? Because okay. that's probably true. You know, there was the animation. Um, uh, resurgence right in the late 80s okay. sure mm-hmm. uh, when i was born and prior to that was a lot of live action that was well let's just say it, it was miserable yeah okay okay um but where they were focusing their live action dollars on was the disney channel right okay and so which i never had that's why i just assumed this movie was a disney channel movie yeah, and I was watching it, and I was like, "Okay, okay, I can forgive a lot." And yeah. then I went to look it up on IMDb later to get my notes in order, and I was like, "Oh hell no!" Yeah, <laughs> well, and, and just to establish this in our world, you still had the tentpole animation classics, right? Because this is Michael Eisner, so we have uh, Little Mermaid at the beginning, we have Lion King, we have Aladdin, and then you have the next tier of his money movie money making movies, which were the straight to video sequels to that. Right. Cool. So that's when you get Cinderella two and three, right? Like that kind of stuff. Um, a, a little mermaid had ones and these are generally much cheaper. So yeah, mermaid had a TV show before. It had a sequel. Well, and that's what I was going to say. The next step was turning those animated TV shows into movies. That's where we get a goofy movie from, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. The 36 Lilo and Stitch movies. Some were theatrical, some were straight to video. Are there really 36? There, there's eight. Like no hyperbole. Why? Eight. Because some were directly to that. Some were sequels of sequels. Some were sequels to the TV show. Some came directly to DVD. They, the original movie then spawned a TV show, and the pilot was a three-parter that was released also as a movie. Um, Why couldn't they just leave well enough alone? Lilo and Stitch was amazing. Leave it alone. Because there was money to be made, and this is the Eisner 80s and 90s era. And then the final part of it, which was this, was to pump out a lot of these movies, which were two to four a year, and then what they would do is go to AMC or whatever, and then these would play in the afternoons for a matinee, and then at night they would come extra screens for the Touchstone, the Miramax, the PG-13, and R. All of these were PG. All of them were garbage. And then they would tease them on Disney Channel all day. Yep. And then six months later, you'd get them for VHS for either Christmas or a summer release. That's how all of these worked. Oh, my God. I'm so glad this is a podcast, not a video, because the face I'm making is just gross. Well, but, I mean, again, like, The Mighty Ducks was an original idea. Two, three, and then eventually the animated movie. Those were like exactly that. They were in theaters for six weeks. They were pumped heavily, and then 
They were dumped on like a VHS shelf somewhere at a buck at a. And now we have no new ideas. Let's just bring it back. That's true. I'm sh- I'm shocked they haven't rebooted this with a kid. Oh my god! Act. No, there's a reason. Oh no, th- they can find actors now. Daniel Craig can reprise his role, still make out with a 26 year old. I mean, that's you know uh, whoever that 26 year old probably would think it would be the highlight of her career too. Make out with Daniel Craig. So. <laughs> Selena Gomez. Ew! Uh, no, <laughs> can we not? Well, she's a 26 year old who's acting. They can't hire her. She's in a birth control commercial. Disney can't hire her anymore. <laughs> can't be Scarlett Johansson. She's because suing them. She's in a birth control. Yeah, the one that goes in your arm. Makes you feel like you're an alien. I still have the scar. It's really cool. I'll take things I never want to know. I was going to say, first we got dick pics. I mean, there are we've got weirder, her birth control armpit. There are let's weirder not, places to put birth let's control. Let's not talk about ladies' birth control. I blessedly will never have to deal with that in my entire life. Whether yeah, no, you and, ne- you and... No other men either, by the way. Well, either directly or through a spouse. Do you know Do you know why men didn't want birth control? Because it lowered their libido and made them moody. Well, that's so why the we FDA also decided, bomb the Cubans. So the FDA decided not to approve it. Do you know what it does for women? It lowers our libido and makes us moody and causes severe blood clots when we die. Yay. Hasn't changed since the 70s. Are they welcome to my, it? Welcome to my TED Talk. I'm so, done, do you want me to give you the email address for the penis pics or what? Uh, yes, please don't at do not ever dot com. So, the last bit of this movie that we've been trying to like establish, there's no real plot here, but the plot is essentially Lord Beldrake or whatever his name is, Belasco, Belasco, uh, is trying to marry the princess as we mentioned, but in order to do so, he's variously raising the stakes because since King Arthur doesn't have a male heir. He needs a male heir to hand the kingdom off to, mm-hmm. right? Um, and he needs to figure out who's going to marry the princess again, exactly like the Sultan in Aladdin. Um, and he's threatening the whole family at this point, And this kid is ruining it somehow. I don't know how he's ruining it anything, but... Did it not bother anyone that he's literally trying to make this competition not happen and then was down to the final two, and fucking knocked Kane out cold. Like, w- if you were so concerned, why would you now be talented? And if you are that talented, why the fuck would you go through so much effort? Well, and he's actually turns out to be a really good fighter, so why would he care? Why exactly. Don't- like, what what does it matter to you that you're that they're doing it through the... the, the don't tell me plot. Oh, well, that was exactly. I was waiting for a I know, pause, I could and then I was gonna be like, "Plot." I have known you long enough. I can see it. <laughs> well, the other thing I've too, known you longer than I've known Nick. No, uh, let's just say not by much, but yeah, not by true. much, true. But four days. Um, four days, <laughs> something like that, because like their their like third date was to our house, so yeah. it was Valentine's Day. Something like that, yeah. Valentine's weekend. He brought me roses. Um, but I mean, like the whole thing is. Halfway through, in order to get what he wants, Belasco kidnaps the, I, I guess the twin sister, the younger sister, whatever, the one that Thomas E. Nicholas actually can hit on. Um, because Kate, Kate, Win- Kate Winslet said, I'm not going to be in that many scenes with him. I'm sorry. I just, I, I literally cannot be. No, but it's Princess Katie. K A T E Y. As opposed to Princess Sarah, who's played by Kate, which probably made it hilarious on set for everyone except for Kate, who was there to work. <laughs> um, but like the whole, the whole thing is. <laughs> Uh, after kidnap, which is and the thing is, this big plot point happens with half the movie left. Yeah, and Arthur decides to like mope off to his Merlin pit mm-hmm. and cry into Excalibur while Thomas E. Nicholas is standing behind the most see-through of curtains, and he, he watches the king like from his guest room that leads directly there. <laughs> which again, see three weeks ago or whatever when we did first kid and there's just passageways under the white house that the kid can go jerk off in or whatever the, the, yeah. the, why are there passageways here that that he finds immediately whatever doesn't matter this movie's well, terrible princess katie showed him how to get there yep and how to get she into knew. her room and he was visiting around and was plot. and plot. um he was plotting all over that room <laughs> when she wasn't there, just smelling her things. Oh, that is Medieval musky stuff. But, it, but it, it came to a point that you started to wonder if he actually served a purpose because <laughs> of either. how everything sort of panned out. The movie happens to him. Yeah. Very well, clearly. All right. He 
Uh, until he, until the third act, he does nothing. Although he does fair. help Arthur, he does help Arthur. That's, no, no, well, no. Exactly, how but that's the how point, does right? he, he gets, change the outcome of the movie? He gets Arthur out of the castle, and he, then Arthur yells at a lady okay, that he throws gets, her washing he gets, on him, and he's he like, gets, "Dude, you he fucking." He gives Arthur a pep talk, and now Arthur no longer has performance anxiety with um, Excalibur. And 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 yes. and and he gets a sword up, but also. Uh, he, the teenage boy, helps the old man, old man get his get sword, sword back up. up. That's yeah. right. I will also say by handling it first. By yes, the way. Right. So. Yeah. slow down. <laughs> um, but also, I feel like there's a theme to this. There's this Star Trek four scene where he accidentally invents the bicycle <laughs> and, and rollerblades. And sir, I don't have a metal this strong. He goes, "Don't worry. Here's how you invent aluminum." I guess like just, transparent aluminum. It's exactly right. It's the Star Trek four scene. Yeah, he goes, yeah, yeah. and again, or Back to the Future. Don't worry, your kids will love this. Like, yeah, it's exactly. Just, it's just so on the nose. Uh, but then Joss Auckland, who's apparently you know, he's in his 60s or 70s when they make this. And so he's trying to fight and he's moving in slow motion and people are like, oh no! Yeah, like yeah. it's a Steven Seagal movie. Like it's just, uh, it's, it's choice. But they end oh, up saving... Oh, and, 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 I'm sorry. And this bothers me. And this is just a continuity thing. And I, people get so pissed off when I point out continuity things. But like if you're in a joust and you're fucking, what are they called? Joust handle thing? A joust handle thing. Uh, one of them joust handles. Yeah, whatever. If it breaks, don't give me the next scene where you're being victorious and it's a full lance. Thank you. I couldn't think of that word. Adjusting lance. Yes. Thank you. Appreciate that. Are you talking about his lance again? Well, it kept breaking, and then it was in. The, it was like full and whole in the next scene, and I was like, "Is this like a?" It, was, it, I, it, it, it really Joss bothered Ackman me. Need another man to get his lance up. Well, he didn't. Because he can't get his lance up. And by the way, you can't just knock someone off their horse and like it's over. Terrible it's points. over. No, those are the rules. That's the rules. Tournament. In that tournament. And you paralyze them oh, and then tournament. kill them for life, and then you. Well, I mean, it turns out there's only twenty people in the kingdom. If you had to kill them all when you were, fin- you guys watch the people falling off of their horses purposefully, like very obviously purposefully. Huh? Their stunt doubles weren't very good either. Well, well, well first mean, of all, it was the a, pe- I'm going to throw my leg over and then let go of the saddle. I mean, it, it falls under the category the of horses the were very well terrible done. special effects. Well, I mean, okay, so I have a theory on this. I was thinking about this one and watching because you can't pay attention to this movie because you saved your life. But I worked it, through it. I Let's gonna, look at the options here. So was, I was thinking, you know, like, I imagine when uh, they're filming a Christmas movie, like the Little People Union, it's like, well, we guess we have to be elves. Like, do you think there's like a blacksmith's union or they're like, <laughs> you know, like there's 20 people who do the Ren Fair circuit and they're like, well, they're making another King Arthur movie. Who's going to audition this? Because like, that's all these guys I'm are. I'm a professional peasant. That's right. He's just like, well, I haven't bathed in a while. Well, Gary could be our pet. Pe-. He's like, well, Chuck <laughs> could be the blacksmith. You know, <laughs> just just cover him in a little bit of soot. Like, yeah, there's a name for those people. They're called reenactors. Reenactors. My uncle's one of them. Kate, Kate Winslet, not she has things to do. Yeah. So wait, what does your uncle do? Uh, my my one of my mom's brothers. Um, he was a reenactor for a long time, and he actually his, one of his hobbies is to make guns, like uh, Revolutionary and Civil War okay, cool. guns for reenactments. Um, but he actually made the majority of the guns that were in the Patriot because they filmed oh. in Charleston, and that's where the guns are just sure. Cool. I also know people who do this, but they go by a different name. LARPers. Yes. I don't think he understands what that is, um, but he is the exact same person. <laughs> There's also Proud Boys. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. not one of those. Not one of those. No. I, hey, man, I, I, I'm a Civil War even... historian. I deal with a lot of people who think of... There are things they think about the South. Um, My uncle was born and raised in Charleston. There are some biases that I am training out of my family, my surviving family. My grandparents can't argue anymore, so. (laughs) (laughs) That was actually really, really hateful, and that's not what I meant. (laughs) It is. Um, Good talk. (laughs) You can cut that too. Good times. Um, But what I want to do is just leave it in, but then have just a censored beep, and you just hear, you can leave that. (laughs) It's the most edited episode I've ever edited. I feel like it, at some point, Nick's just going to be like, hey, look, if you pay us literally anything, you can hear all of Kelly's inappropriate bloopers. <laughs> Have at it. 
Well, I mean, okay, so we can just wrap this together. After Arthur saves the sister, uh, figures out Lord Velasco's behind it, and, you know, Calvin's like, why don't you just arrest him or kill him now or whatever? He goes, look, the guards are all behind him. It, it's a neat little set of, no, of plot setting. I mean, but I have a question, that's question. Good. I have no. a question, question. Because a princess said outright that she she would marry him. There were There were no... Like witnesses, if she's alive, if she's this, if she's that, and back then, a verbal agreement was basically a contract. So like he could have been like, uh, uh-uh, uh, no, she said this, and you guys were actually standing in the doorway and heard it, and she has to go through with it. Like, and then the tournament doesn't have to happen. Is that like not a thing? I well, okay. First of all, I don't think this movie focused on being historically accurate. That's fair. Okay. Um, second plot. <laughs> well, and also there's, a, I mean, we're talking about a movie where there's a line where he's like, this is drive-by shooting, kill you for your Reebok shit. Yeah. And I'm just like, we are talking about medieval England. Yeah. Like, and, and I mean, this is also a King Arthur who hits everyone with the so broad side be... of his sword instead of like the sharp side of his sword. So would it be a ride-by, like arrow shooting? This is like a carriage-by or... shootery. For your Robin Hood could show up brains? dressed as a Ninja Turtle, and we'd be fine. This this is fine. We're all fine. At this point, he then takes uh, King Arthur on a romantic bike ride, if I recall correctly. <laughs> <laughs> Don't they flip over, though, into the mud? Well, they do, and they play raindrops <laughs> are falling on my head, and then he gets Aww. knighted. <laughs> um, and, and where King Arthur says, yeah, this is good enough. And then we see the Black Knight again, and they're like, hey, he's the hero because he's feeding the poor people. And then King Arthur's like, we have poor people, but trickle-down economics, and then we cut to black. Um, uh, and again, <laughs> it goes back to my thing. It's like they had the opportunity to make this smart and satirical and witty. Or yeah. anything. Make it have a point. Like, And the thing is... Disney wasn't at that point yet. Michael Eisner was like, you know what we could sell? Night toys. Um, I don't even think they're still at that point yet. I mean, and again, uh, uh, we, we don't have anything here. At this point, uh, the power of rock and roll can't save him this time. So instead, he blinds the guy with a laser pointer, which is the worst CGI job I've ever seen. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, all I could think of is like, I mean, and they show that laser going into people's eyes. And I mean, I had total anxiety just watching that. Also, by the way, we've all had Discman in our past, I hope. Are you that young? I what now? What? Okay, good. But he opens up the clamshell and just shoots it out of the spindle in the middle. I know. Not Did a you thing. notice that? I too? Know, oh my god! Which is not a thing. <laughs> and my wife's like, "What happened with the flashlight?" I'm like, "Oh no, it's the CD player he had." And she's like, "This is really stupid." I'm like, "You are right. <laughs> you are 100 percent right." They say the princess, uh, Kate Winslet, hugs her because it's like, turns out. How how did we not know that Lord Velasco was like a rapist this whole time? Because there's the threat of rape is very real in this movie. Yep. For a kid's oh movie. My God, yes. Because again, Jafar, asshole, and then dresses up Jasmine as Princess Leia throughout. But it's not like he grabs her by the ass and goes, You're coming with me, which is kind of what Velasco's Ew. doing in this, though. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Then they're all like, but what about the tournament? And they're like, it's coming down to the tournament. And then, you know, the Mighty Ducks beat the Icelanders or whatever happens. Well, then Calvin wins. And Arthur, who is so dense, is like, you won Sarah. And then fucking Katie's looking at him like, I know the fuck you did not. Uh -uh, Uh-uh, it's mine. I also want to just stop you for one second, because you're right. This movie should be done then. This movie is 100 and 30 or an hour and 30 minutes it's 90 minutes on the nose we're at an hour and 10 when this tournament starts the tournament goes on for 20 minutes of this tiny movie yeah holy shit snacks this is awful and then it's just a bunch of dudes with long hair and they're just like we're gonna win the princesses for like because we got to go back and help so create wait that's back to the er, that's bill ted again but still like and And then then, they jump off their horses well yeah then it's like a a cutscenes of all these people getting jousted off their horses like we the don't need to see same, every single joust it's extra from medieval times colors. for christ's sake they didn't change their costumes they're yeah. the same three colors and what's the word for the lance, lance. no what the coat Penis. of arms over and over oh. again i can word sure you can also by the way uh count belasco is 
cheating with a gem in his forehead like he's a fucking Power Ranger and cries, it only affects the one person, which is Sir Kane, who's allergic to sunlight. And this is when he gets knocked clear off his horse. what? Did you not see this? Okay, so No, I was working so through this part. At this point, I was so done. So at this point, there's he like... cheated. There, there, there's a That's bracket fair. system, you know, because... Yeah. Okay. And we have the Purple Knight, who is Belasco with these kind of, you know... They're, mm-hmm. they're, they're horns. But in the middle of his forehead is a gem, like he is in a Japanese anime. Mm. And we get the worst CGI effect ever, which is like this weird sparkle vision. Like he's <laughs> Sailor Moon, and I'm doing the finger thing. So you went Sailor Moon and I went vision and then it's fine. That's fine. No, no, you're fine because it is the vision in the forehead. Right? right? Yeah. But on the other end, to show that it's blinding Sir Kane, there's like this spotlight gif that is moving around <laughs> his face. And it's I mean, it's like someone took a mirror and basically was shining light at him. And I that's what I thought it was. Literally looking at my computer screen for this, so I really have no idea what you're talking about. This just sounds so bad. Well, I'm I mean, kind of glad anyway. I missed it. And to wit, it's the kind of thing that it happened at the Euro Cup where there was a British guy shining a light at like someone in the finals with a laser beam, but no one notices it anywhere. Like you'd think that someone would be like, hey, he's using magics and beat him to death like the witch he is. But <laughs> but no one even hey. looks up, right? No one even pays attention. And then uh, Sir Kane, temporarily blinded by this, is knocked, but not knocked off his horse, which is the part I remember the best. So he's semi-conscious, and this is also... Oh, no, 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 not knocked off his horse. Partially knocked off his right, horse. Right, he's still stuck to the saddle. He's right? still stuck to, stuck he's to still the still in the stirrups. So therefore, it's not over. He hasn't lost. Those are the rules. Those are yeah. the rules. Yep. We play by the rules here. After he's given him the grody-ass Snickers bar that's been in his pants for the last two weeks. Oh. I don't even think it was a Snickers. It really looked like a really cheap, like, chocolate-covered, it was like, a Mickey rice crispy or something. It was gross. It was, like, chunky and, like, don't It was like that. that. It, it, was, it was that prop from the pool scene in Caddyshack. That's right. Yes. It was the, the, the baby Ruth. But half of the chocolate had rubbed off of it, so it yeah. was just, like, all the peanuts and shit. That was the one scene Daniel Craig needed his stunt double for. He <laughs> so you have to eat? He, gets, he takes it with his gauntlet, he picks it up, and then it cuts to another dude just going, Hush, and he goes, oh, it truly is magic from the future, sir, whatever, Calvin. <laughs> like he just barfs off the <laughs> um yeah and so he's that would have been more convincing than magic in the face <laughs> for sure <laughs> he tries to fry french fries for sir kane he burns down half the castle and just <laughs> anyway anyway um and so at this point uh like i said stuck in the stirrup uh semi-conscious and he goes how many fingers am i holding up i'm a lo- i'm an actor in this movie and he goes a little bit off the top so i don't look like i have a penis for a haircut and uh, so then Thomas E. Nicholas. But the guy next to him goes, he's speaking in tongues. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, no, he doesn't like his wig. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so Thomas E. Nicholas puts on the uh, suit and, oh, he learned something. He learned how to joust. Although he he's terrible learned, at it. He also learned how to balance a helmet on his head while, or on his shoulders while riding a horse. And in, unable to see, which I said, how is he seeing less? Which is fine. Have little, like, you know, peepholes. Adam and nipples. He was looking. He was looking through Kane's nipples. I'm gonna go with the shoulders, but yes, probably. I mean, depending on where the. I mean, that's what the cosplayers do, right? Like we look through your nipples. Yeah, or look through the boobies. Um, but I will say too. At this point, the scene where uh, Calvin rides back around to the starting position and goes, and he's just holding up the lance, and they go, "Tis black magic." I'm like, I literally said, "No, tis a terrible script." But that's it. <laughs> like two people say that. And then he continues to joust, and there's no noise. There's no what is going on. This needs to stop. A ghost can't joust. Like any of these other options. But then. Don't tell me plot. No, no, no. no. <laughs> but then, but then the black knight. Black yes. knight rides up. Um, because again, Thomas E. Nicholas technically wins. It reveals himself. Um, the uh, Blasco pulls out the bluntest knife I've ever seen. Um, and then the Black Knight, like, gets his cape or gets gets the back of his tunic, pins him to the ground, then no, knocks with that, the with sh- it, with a, um, crossbow. Yes. And then knocks the shit out of him, nearly trampling with his horse, which better movie just crushes his head like yes. a grape. Um, and, and then that he- suddenly makes the Black Knight the winner of the tournament. 
who which can yeah, because we know he's the bad guy. Because right? by the way, this is how the rules red... don't make sense. This but is the how... guards are still on Velasquez's Velasquez. side. Well, I mean, but this is how all Ren fests end, where they cut out the heart of the winner and then they eat it. And... Ooh, ooh, yeah, I mean, yeah. That's right. That's how it goes. Dogs, but yes. Um, but then he goes, "You random stranger who didn't play the game, you get to nail my daughter." And then it goes, turns out it was his daughter. And she gets to nail herself. And, and, she's, and Sir Kane. Look but here, she sometimes gets to that works better. Choose her own nailer. Husband. Oh, yeah. That's and then he immediately said. takes away her right to choose anything because it's the Middle Ages, which we have established exactly. doesn't matter. King Arthur scratches his belly for 20 minutes and then eats the head off a boar. <laughs> Whatever nonsense food stuff happens this whole movie. Yeah, the food is gross. But then everyone, well, then. Merlin sends uh, Calvin back to the future. Well, back they asked the Calvin. They said, because they, they kind of say, like, well, technically you won. What do you want? You can have anything you want. Do you want castles? Do you want this? Do you want that? And he's like, I want to go home. And then Princess Katie's like, hi. I, thought, I already lost my, ver- I'm, I'm useless. Oh, fuck. It, and, but, 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 and then. So he goes home. To the, to before. There's no. Oh, I've watched enough Doctor Who to know that he cannot go back to the game before it happens because then the earthquake doesn't happen and he doesn't get to go back. Okay, so, and that's what bothered me the most here. And it's because they do also the Wizard of Oz ending where everyone is actually back in time because his uh, teammate is the princess. Joss Ackland is just an old man whittling wood in the stands. And if you're doing that, you have to set that up before. But he calls her Princess Katie and she smiles. And so she was it implies not there before. that they came to the back to the future together. Too. She jumped in after him like some dipshit and follows him to the future at what 15? Well, and she is older than he is and can act. So it just it, all of it feels even weirder. But like that's what I said if they wanted to do it, you should pan over the crowd at the beginning. And she is on the bench, and he is the yeah, like she's somewhere, right? But then you can do the Wizard of Oz thing, where everyone who we are introduced in the first ten minutes is also He's playing King these Arthur, roles, yeah. right? And then at the end, you can even do the same stupid gag oh. where Merlin catches the ball because then you're just like, but was it really? And the Merlin well, catches. That, the- I think that's the, the thing is that they they need to with this type of an ending with this type of a movie. They either need to do the Wizard of Oz thing and set it up ahead of time and be very clear that this might be all in his head. <laughs> or just let him wake up okay. when someone threw a ball at his head. <laughs> well, right. Because that or, would be better. And that would explain the, yeah, the concussion, the hallucination. Well, I mean, <laughs> the original Connecticut Yankee, you know, it was a head, head wound that sent him back to die. Well, well the other so thing, too. Yes, exactly. That would make sense. The other thing, too, is it would help if he knew anything. He's playing this valley idiot. Which is the Bill and yeah. Ted thing, but like in a Connecticut Yankee, he proves he has magical powers by predicting an eclipse, right? Like that's that's a good gag because he knew something about modern science. But here, there's just not, he needs help with everything, so he's just a prick. I'm sorry. No, I'm with you. And I, he's our hero, but you got to give him something. And then he hits the fucking home run, and Merlin catches it, and the the pitcher's embarrassed because it turns out that he doesn't matter and he doesn't get to go back in time until I guess. I don't know, the Mongols invade and they need someone to be their hero. Sure. <laughs> so the whole time I was watching this and choosing to do the things that I put off for a week. Um, but you need to have fans. Right? Jonathan is... I don't have fans. <laughs> so Jonathan you have is only texting fans, me, excuse me. John, <laughs> not giving that handle either. So Jonathan's texting me. He's like, he's getting his oil changed. Right, and he took it to the dealership because when he got the new car, I negotiated a whole lot of free things because they lied to us about a lot of stuff in the car. But so, anyways, it's like this is taking forever. Have you watched the movie yet? And I was like, "There's 15 minutes left. Do you want to switch?" <laughs> like my brain is going, "I'll wait the two hours for the car. I'll read my book, watch this. Please, my God, this is terrible. I hate this so much. We didn't even finish the joust by that point, and I was just like, can we, can we just not. We didn't even talk about Mad Dog Gum." Where he swallows it, and then he starts foaming. You're not supposed to swallow it. You never swallow it. And then he starts foaming at the mouth, and you're just like, wow. Yeah, King Arthur almost dies? He poisoned King Arthur. Oh, my God. <laughs> what a fucking asshat. So, uh, she'd rather die. She'd rather read a fucking book. What about I you, Charlie? I would rather sit through a two-hour oil change, y'all. Okay. And that's 30 minutes longer than the movie. Basically, this movie was just hot garbage. 
It was, it was terrible. terrible. It was, uh, like I said, I, I expected more from a Disney theatrical yeah. release. In fact, it was so bad that when the sequel came out, Disney didn't even like put their name on it. I'm sorry, the what? Aladdin Court. We talked about it earlier. It it's, but it's actually a sequel? It's yeah. Ac- it's Tom same, Z. Nicholas is in it. Same, same actor. Calvin return. Calvin Fuller returns no, to no, the no. past. No, no, I just thought that that was like and an Hobbs accidental in this one. one-off no. thing. No, it's it's terrible. It was so bad. Like I said, that it was direct to video, and it Disney didn't even put their name on it. They released it under Trimark. Okay, just hot garbage. Terrible. Um, I'm sure that children I'm loved it so with, in the it. '90s. I was not a child when this came out. This um, I knew better. So, I, I mean, final thoughts on this. You're right, 100%. And that's the thing that bothers me the most, which is that I've seen Blank Check and First Kid. There's at least, it's actually filmed in D.C. for, for First Kid. Blank Check's actually filmed in, I think, Chicago. It's been a while. But, like, they put money into that. This has nothing. Like This was not filmed in Camelot. Well, <laughs> well yeah, but, like, this wasn't even filmed at a Renfest. There was just, like, one tent at a time. B-roll of a castle. Like, day for night. And the tent collapses on <laughs> Right. But like but that's the best part of the movie. But like, here's the thing. You could have had anyone do a script. It's easy to fix this script. Yeah. But this is lazy left to right. Like I, I would say you almost need to see it as a what's it. Just turn it off whenever you're bored because you won't believe that Disney put fifteen million dollars into this. Mm-hmm. Like I've n- Rewatching this, hey, I'm with Kelly. I can't believe my parents, you know, spent whatever it was back in 1990, but like twenty five dollars to buy this. I'm sure in today's thanks to inflation, like forty bucks to buy this movie. But holy snap, this is unwatchable. And my parents didn't even pay it all at once. They rented it several times. They probably spent more on renting this movie than it was just to buy it. And I feel like I need to call my mom and apologize. I know she's not going to remember what movie this is. Or maybe, my God, with my luck, she would. And she would be like, uh, yeah, you owe me this. That's why you don't get Christmas presents. This year. Like, like, yeah, right? Is. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, this is this is ungodly. Um, and so I haven't decided what feat this is going to be on yet. But uh, thanks for listening. This was fun. Uh, and I guess if you're a patron, uh, we'll let you know where to send dick pics uh, to John's email and all that stuff. So uh, thanks, guys. Myopia Movies is produced by Nick Hoffman and Daniel Settis. It is hosted by Nick Hoffman and Daniel Settis. Mission Briefing is hosted by John Coxey. Podcasts are edited by Daniel Settis and Patreon is edited by Nick Hoffman. Our engineer is Nick Hoffman. The theme song is Sir Shimmy by Kevin McLeod from Incontech.com. Licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0 license.